there friends welcome to Stampin Peace with Mary Nabe um, to be honest I just came down to my studio 30 minutes ago um, I took the time today to uh, I just packed up my backpack my computer um, some paperwork a workbook for my blogging class and just went over to um, the local public library and worked over there for, I don't know, several hours. Um, very productive, got a lot done. I'm tired, my brain feels worn out, but it was a good day. But I have to say, I made some observations when I was there. Um, I have to remember that um, just before 2.30, when I go back to the library to work, just before 2.30, I need to make my way over to one of the quiet rooms because at 2.30, all the junior high and high school kids um, from the school across the street come over and it gets loud and uh, it was just kind of fun watching them. It really didn't bother me. I had had a productive day, but it's been a long time since I've um, been experiencing teenagers on a daily basis. So it was kind of interesting hearing their conversations and the laughter and whatever and i i got to thinking you know some people would probably be annoyed by that but it was it was good noise um it was well-behaved noise and i thought how fortunate that these teenagers live in a community where they have access to the public library to go and hang out with their friends after school there's a, a room that appears to be designated towards um, the school kids. There's chess boards in there and, and they can socialize and talk about their days, especially after the pandemic with, you know, the crazy years they've been through, um, remote learning, in school, out of school, you know, that sort of thing. So um, I just took it all in for a little bit. And then um, I did end up picking a book. Yesterday I asked to read, uh, viewers for suggestions of good books I could read. And I did choose one of those called um, uh, Lessons on Chemistry. And it was recommended my, by my cousin, Susan Wyland. But now that all of you, so many of you have um, put book suggestions there, um, I will have no problem um, picking up some good books each time I hit the library. So thank you for that. Um, I did get some happy mail, quite a surprise today. Um, when I came home, there were two packages, one, a little one from Amazon, which is a business supply. I knew I was getting that, but there was another box sitting out there um, from that came through the postal service. And I thought, well, what in the world could this be? So do you remember when we made these um, Valentine treats, maybe, I don't know, what, two weeks ago, maybe? Um, and I showed you how to make the cardboard tray, the cardstock tray, to put the Hershey nuggets on. And I said, oh, that reminds me of when I was a kid and we would get chuckles occasionally, um, like on the drive to our grandparents' house. My mom would pick up some of those as a surprise and just the candy on those, that little white tray just reminded me of that. And I made the comment, I don't even know if they still make chuckles but it's just a fun kid memory. Well, lo and behold, in that box today was six packs of Chuckles. They do still make Chuckles. So thank you to Pat Farrell, who um, surprised me with that today. I'll have a few of those for my snack this evening. Um, but the one thing to comment, they look exactly the same and they say original Chuckles. Um, but what struck me is, there's no white tray in there anymore. So, um, but that was interesting, but I had no idea if they were still being made or not. And now I know the answer to that. So um, I'll have to uh, find some people to share those with. Oh, share them with my sister. Absolutely, absolutely. And Andrea and John will be here tomorrow too um, for dinner. So I'll pass that on to them as well. So thank you for that. Um, today, we are going to focus on just one stamp set, Scenic Garden. It's a celebration free product that um, I didn't realize I hadn't used yet. 
So I definitely wanted to pull this out and use it for this evening. Um, it is the Scenic Garden, and it's one that can be earned with a $300 purchase or a party or a workshop. Um, and actually I've been accumulating a few of these. So after celebration is over, um, maybe next month or the following month, maybe I'll wait till April, um, I'm going to do a class with the few of these that I have. Okay, so let's get started on today's um, demonstration. We're going to make a scenic garden card three different ways. While I'm changing my camera, would you please share this live video and invite others to join us for tonight's card making demonstration? Oh, thank you to all who are joining me. And since I had not um, used this, stamp set yet. I thought this is a good time to show you once again, remind you once again, um, how to add the cling stickers to your rubber stamps. So I'm going to quickly show you that now. I already took care of the other ones in my set. They all have their labels on. So what I like to do is pull off the entire label. And when you pull it off, you want to keep that adhesive backing on. And this side will be sticky. And if it's facing you, that's exactly the image that it will stamp. So I'm going to lay that sticky side down on a clear acrylic block. I'm going to use my take your pick tool to help me lift off the adhesive backing there. So now I'm gonna flip it over. So this is how I would stamp. I see the image just as I want it to stamp on my cardstock. And now I'm going to match up that sticky label to the foam side of my rubber stamp. So you want the rubber facing down and you're just going to hover over that foamy side until you have the edges of the label lined up with the edges of the foam or with the back of the, the um, back of your stamp. Okay, easy peasy, right? Mary Ellen, yes, you can um, pull one of those corners of the adhesive backing off before you even lay the sticker down on your block if you like. And I'm coloring with um, watercolor pencils. These are my second favorite um, coloring tool. My first is the Stampin' Blends, as you probably know, but my second favorite coloring tool is the um, watercolor pencils. And we have two assortments of them. I think the one has 12 colors and the second assortment has 10. But I have a couple, I know I have at least each of them and maybe an extra pack in there just because I used to use them for in-person events quite a bit. Um, so I'd like to have extras, but, and I just have a simple, basically a simple elementary school student pencil sharpener that I use. So I'm going to be stamping with my Memento ink. And you know, oftentimes when I um, use Memento ink, in my demonstrations, you'll notice that it starts upside down. Does anybody know why that is? Does anybody know why that is? The reason I do that, and I store that it upside down, the reason I do that is so that the ink is coming to the stamping surface. These are, um, the Memento ink is not made by Stampin' Up. Our regular, classic Stampin' Pads are designed so that when they are closed, the ink pad itself is facing down and that keeps the ink coming to the stamping surface. Um, and it just helps for better images, 
longer lasting, that sort of thing. And less re-inking also. Okay, so let me ink this up. I can ink up my stamp the usual way by pressing my rubber stamp onto the ink pad, or I can do it this way since it's a larger, it's a little bit hard for me to see here if it's getting all the lines. Um, since it's quite a large stamp, another option is to do it the way I just showed you, pressing the ink pad to the rubber. So either way works. And I'm just gonna stamp this in the middle of my white cardstock. I've cut this to four and a quarter by three inches. Okay, four and a quarter by three inches. So on this card, it's gonna be remain a black and white card. I'm not even going to color it. I know some of you like the black and white look. You can also just add a pop of color. Maybe color in some blue around the image or maybe add um, a layer or a ribbon, something like that, that has a pop of color. But I'm gonna keep mine just black and white. Sometimes I enjoy just making a set of black and white note cards. They're on hand, they're both masculine, feminine, can work for so many different occasions, and um, I would um, could package them up, and it makes a very nice, simple gift. You know, sometimes you want just that little token gift. Um, this is a great thing to use for that. I could lay it flat, and it looks awesome, but I think I will pop this up on some dimensionals. Yes, Pam, the um, Stamparatus is always a choice. If you think you might have a stamp that could be difficult to um, stamp a perfect image on, or with, I should say, because the Stamparatus allows us to re-stamp while having our cardstock and everything lined up perfectly. So another good choice. Super simple, super fast, right? Can you see yourself whipping up a bunch of these and packaging them nicely and giving as a maybe a hostess gift or a gift to just cheer up a coworker? Um, you're meeting with your Bible study friends for dinner and you wanna give them each a little something, okay? So now we're gonna take in another step. Great easy card for beginners as well. If you know somebody, if you are at the beginning stages of stamping or you know somebody who is and you're trying to draw them into stamping and card making, this is a great type of stamp to use for that. Okay, same thing, same size cardstock, but now I'm going to do some coloring to it. Where's my... Um, I will tell you one thing is I always like to have... Let me grab a scrap. I always like to have a piece of scrap paper handy because sometimes when you color, they might look different or I'm um, like... You know, we're pretty close with the colors, but I just like to see it on the white cardstock or whatever color cardstock I'm using. So I'm just going to quickly color in this bench. Kind of a, I'm using Cajun Craze as that sort of, uh, oh, what's like a teak wood color, you know, a stained wood. But of course you could make it any color because nowadays people are refurbishing furniture and choosing lots of fun colors. I 
And you can see, even though the stamp is very detailed, I'm going to be able to color this in pretty quickly. In fact, the, the bench is going to be the most time consuming. I also like if I, and you can see that some of these I just sharpened. I also often like to just um, color on my cardstock just to dull that tip a little bit. And I find it's easier to color with. You don't see all those pencil lines and marks as much. Now these are watercolor pencils, so they are designed, to make sure I'm coloring in the right spaces, they are designed for you to use our blender pens with. That just kind of smooths out the strokes. Okay, it's weird because I'm getting like this visual, I don't know, something. Something's happening with my eyes. <laughs> okay, let's see here. These need, no, those are spaces. And then I'll just quickly color the seat of the bench. I'm gonna add some more color before I bring in those blender pens and show you how those work. And that's a, a coloring tool that can also be used in many different ways. Now I'm going to fill in with, so that's one I wanna dull the tip a little bit. That's better. Fill in some of these flowers with gorgeous grape. And what I love about these um, sketched images, you don't have to color perfectly because they're not drawn perfectly. So it takes, if you are one that stresses or has anxiety over coloring, you're trying to color it in just perfectly, no, 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 not with this stamp set. You know I like to keep things fun and easy and stress-free for you. And for me as well, I guess. And then I'm just gonna add some green. Not necessarily coloring a whole lot, but going over the stems and some of those little leaves. This is Granny Apple Green. I also pulled out the old olive if I want to incorporate a darker shade. Does anybody have the color pencils? Another reason I like them so much is they are very affordable and they last forever. I've used these with classes and all kinds of things and um, they really last a long time. Oops, I missed one of the bench legs. Did anybody catch that? Again, I'm not really coloring. I'm just adding strokes of the granny apple green color, kind of going down those stem features, going into the leaves just a little bit. And that's how I'm bringing in some color to what would otherwise be just a black and white image, like on our first card. Trying to show that green stem between the blossoms. I think that looks pretty good. Fast, right? Quick, easy, fast. Love it. Diane, you just got these watercolor pencils. Awesome. 
And now I need to grab a blender pen. They come in a little box like this, a pack of three of them. I believe they're $12 in the annual catalog. You do not add any water or any kind of liquid to these. When they come, they already come with a moistened, um, moistened tips. There's already some kind of um, liquid that's absorbed into the tips. So you don't have to worry about that. But if you go on your hand, you can see, I don't know if you can see it, but it, it feels wet, but it's not like a puddle or anything. And then what I want you to see is, first of all, look on the bench part. You can see all my strokes and things, can't you? Look what happens when I just go over these parts of the bench, just coloring over them with this blender pen. It does exactly what its name says it should do, is it blends all those strokes together. Look at the difference up here. I'm doing half of it. Here you can still see my strokes. It just gives it a more, um, I guess I would say a cleaner, more polished look. I guess I should have colored in this part. This is part of that bench too. I'm just gonna drag some of that up here. All right, now I'm going to switch and do some of the, um, I did not use watercolor paper. This is just standard basic white cardstock, okay? The blender pens work great on just the plain cardstock. If I were using aqua painters, I would then use or water painters, um, I would then use the watercolor paper. I'm just going over some of these greens. You can see it even, especially in these like grassy areas here, I can even pull the color from where I put it down so that the color extends further. You see what I mean when I say that? Watch what happens here. I didn't put any um, right at the bottom here. I didn't put any um, granny apple green coloring right there on those little parts. But look how I can go over that granny apple green in other places and just drag it down. And now I have the green where I did not before. So it allows you to do that as well. The next time I show blender pens, I'll have to show you how to use um, blender pens with ink pads to color. That's super easy and fun. And again, gives you another way to use your um, blender pens. All right, so I'm going to stop there and just finish off this card. I'm going to add it to a piece of basic black. My white is four and a quarter by three inches and my black is four and three eighths by three and an eighth inch. I just wanted a little small border. Now I'm putting this on basic white thick cardstock. When I use um, want basic white card bases, I prefer to use the thick. The reason being they stand up better. It's not as flimsy as the basic white. It's a little thicker, a little sturdier, and you can even feel the difference. So I do use the basic white thick cardstock for my card bases for stamping and layering 
I use the regular basic white cardstock. Oh, let's pop this up too, right? Just because we can. What's a card without dimensionals? Every once in a while, one of you will say, Mary, you didn't use any dimensionals. But it's rare. It's rare, isn't it? <laughs> well, I got that one right there. These are the small dimensionals. I need to pull out a package of the regular size dimensionals. And then I probably wouldn't be using as much on this piece. But I do want it to maintain its higher layer throughout the whole piece. Again, a super simple card, right? So we went from plain black and white to adding some color. You know, I think this bench could even be a little darker. I was thinking, I know there's a brown, and I want to say there's an early espresso in this set, but there is. So that would have been another good choice. And I can even go over the Cajun craze with the early espresso. Just giving that bench a whole nother look. A little bit darker finish. Or I could have colored the bench with just early espresso or gray or black or a fun color like Bermuda Bay. That's one of the colors represented in the in one of the sets of the watercolor pencils. I actually like it just a little bit di darker with a little bit more shade to it. Um, shading, I should say, brown shading to it. Tony, I agree. And sometimes isn't simple and elegant nice? Sometimes you just want simple and elegant. I think this would be make a lovely sympathy card, um, hello thinking about you card, or just a plain note card with no sentiment on. And then obviously one with the color. Now we're gonna do something a little bit different. Some of you may have seen me do this before and some may have even tried it. But now instead of stamping this image on white, I'm going to stamp it on crumb cake cardstock. And I'm not gonna stop there. I'm going to color the image on the crumb cake cardstock. And this is a great time to use my white watercolor pencil. Now the white watercolor pencil shows up very white on the crumb cake cardstock. Some of the colors, when you color on the crumb cake, will appear a little bit different. They're not going to look exactly the same as they would when coloring on um, your white cardstock. And go a little bit lighter, make it kind of look like a, what do I say, kind of like a, a washed, whitewashed look. Again, notice how easy it is to color this. I used to be one of those people who would look at a stamp like this or a stamp like this and think, no way, I'm not getting that. That's too much coloring. And I even like to color, but I would see all the little detail and I think, oh my gosh. But no, it doesn't have to be hard and stressful. doesn't have to be exact 
with these, um, I'll call them like fine line sketches or art sketches. That's how I think of them. Doesn't have to be perfect because they're not drawn to be perfect. Okay, how about a color for the flowers this time? Should we go the same? Let's just go the same so that we can see the comparison from the ones on the white cardstock to the crumb cake cardstock. I'm not really even coloring in the, necessarily coloring in the lines of the flowers. I'm just kind of coloring over them, coloring a dot, putting a dot of color over the flower images because they're so tiny. And some of them, are very um, carefree looking, not an exact shape. And trust yourself when you're doing this. Have fun with it. If you wanna add more purple flowers where there may not be some, add them. They'll blend right in. If, if you're not a lover of purple, pick another color. Again, with if you get both assortments of the watercolor pencils, you have a choice of 22 different colors. So I think that's pretty awesome. Um, We'll go back in with this guard or uh, granny apple green. You know what I think of every time I say granny apple green? I think of the green Macintosh apples and apple pie. because I've always heard, and, and actually have done it, I guess, um, that those are such good apples for baking, which they are. And that's what I think of every time I say the name Granny Apple Green. I should have a stampin' party, we can uh, Make cards that use granny apple green and then serve apple pie. Main with the uh, green Macintosh apples. Right, Did I, is that right, Macintosh? I think that's the right one. Obviously it's been a long time since I baked with apples. I like to put some green, even though you don't really see the stem that much between the blossoms, I do like to pull some green in there just so that the little blossoms don't look like they're floating in air. So what do you think? Now again, if I decide I wanna do some blending, it's very easy for me to do that. And I, I'm not sure if I mentioned you can use the same blender pen over and over with different colors. Granny Smith, thank you, Granny Smith. After I said that the second time, I thought that is not right. It should have the name Granny in it. They're not Macintosh, they're grannies. Okay, <laughs> who said that? Thank you, Carol, for setting me straight there. Um, by the way, I do make a pretty awesome apple crisp with Granny Smith apples. But again, just go over it very lightly and quickly. You don't even have to press hard. I'm really just dragging the water or the uh, blender pen over my coloring. The white, you don't, I didn't see the lines as much there. So we don't really need to. 
Now, if you're switching colors, you always want to just clean off your tip just like that. And I don't think I went over the purple flowers before, but I am on this one. And the blender pen will pick up some color on the tip. After time and lots of use, it will discolor like Here's one of mine. So it's this is a used one. It's, you can see it's clean. There's no color coming off, but it's it is stained. But it doesn't affect as long as you clean it. It doesn't affect the um, the ability to do its job. We'll say. I think I'm pretty happy with that. I also like to suggest that before you close it up and put it away, you'll want to be sure to clean as well. All right. And when you get out a blender pen, now I did it with this because it was right out of the box. It's a new one. But if I were to take this out and color with either of these ends, before I start coloring, I would just double check because if there, if you haven't cleaned off the tip, it will still have some of that previous color on it, which may not go, excuse me, may not go with what you're, um, what you're making. This was the same size cardstock, keeping it, it very easy for you tonight. Four and a quarter by three inches and the black is four and three eighths by three and one eighth. And this one, well, it looks good on the white. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on a crumb cake base. Oops. Why did I do that when I am even thinking in my head dimensionals? I guess force a habit. We have a place um, probably about, I would say 20 minutes from where I live. And, and I'm sure there's more around, but um, one in particular that I go to each fall for apples and pumpkins is Lynn Fruit Farm. Um, I enjoy going out there and they have lots of varieties of apples in their orchards and you can check online for the schedule so that you can either purchase or um, pick your own apples of certain varieties um, throughout the season. So that's kind of neat. And it's, it's, I actually like walking the orchards and just seeing all the different kinds of apples because there's always more, um, more varieties than you would ever think. Okay, so what I want you to notice here is the green and the purples. They really look pretty much similar, but on the um, crumb cake cardstock, they do appear darker. It hasn't really changed the, um, what do I wanna say, like the value of the color, is that the right word? but it just appears to be a little bit um, of a different shade of purple. Maybe a little more muted, perhaps a, a little bit darker, whereas this one's just a little bit brighter. But you can even experiment coloring on different color cardstocks. Um, these are sort of my go-tos for this kind of thing, but let me, here's an example. Here's some. We used the rich razzleberry the other day in our um, bleaching technique demonstration. If you missed that, or if you want to watch the bleach technique again, um, it is on my blog, stampinpeace.com. So that's the easiest place to see it. But you know, you can color 
any different color on any different cardstock. Just take a sample and do it and experiment. Um, I like to do that. One year I made a really, really pretty fall card that was colored on, I believe it was Rich Razzleberry, but I embossed um, fall leaves with gold and then I colored in. Or, oh, you know what? It wasn't, it was black. Rich Razzleberry was the layer. Black is what I stamped and embossed the gold on, the gold leaves. And then I colored over and it was so interesting. I used all kinds of different colors to color those leaves. I wish I still had it because it, it was one of my favorite cards ever. Um, here, let's just, let me grab a scrap here. But it was one of my favorite cards ever because even though that's Calypso Coral, even though I was using fall colors and I was, they appeared so differently on black, but yet they worked so well together, just like they would on white. This is real red. Um, what's this green? This is garden green, but it, and having all the different colors blended together on the black, surrounded by, you can go over it with another color, um, surrounded by the gold embossing was just gorgeous. It was beautiful, it was rich, it was very artistic. Um, awesome, I wish I had it to show you. I wish I'd kept it as a matter of fact. I don't often say that about cards because I'm always making cards. Um, so it's hard to have a favorite, but that is one I, I wish I still had. All right, everybody. So here are three different ways you can use the Scenic Garden stamp or any other stamp. It, um, we tried something similar with the In the Country Celebration stamp set. I did a class, I believe, last summer with the Wild and Sweet stamp set where um, the participants made a set of black and white cards but then I also had them coloring with the watercolor pencils, made a whole different set. Same cards, just one was black and white and the other we colored parts. Like I might've colored, here I just colored the tree itself and some of the green leaves. Here I just colored the grassy part. Here the leaves by the koala and a little bit of the tree. So it got that pop of color. So this, these techniques work well with any of those um, line art images and they're fun they're easy to do and they can add some variety to your card making so whether you want to go real simple simple elegant plain simplistic minimalist or if you want to dress it up with some more color they work great either way all right okay i am going to give away the these three cards tonight to three lucky winners. So if you are watching and liked, would like to have your name entered into the drawing to receive one of these handmade cards, please type in the comments now, Scenic Garden, Scenic Garden. Oh, Marcia, you did the Wild and Sweet class. Awesome. I'm so glad you liked it. Okay, are there any questions for me? Um, just a friendly reminder that celebration continues through February 28th. I believe all of the celebration products in this brochure are still available, which is good news, um, as well as Stampin' Up! added more um, choices for you. So you can also order, um, get any of these free with your qualifying order. I will point out, though, if you want to get any of these free that you see on the flyer, be sure you're using the free code the free item number, because that item number to get it free is different than the usual item number, okay? 
All right. If there are no questions for me, I'm going to say good night. Tony, you're welcome. I'm so happy that um, you enjoy being a part of my Facebook Lives. I will see you Friday afternoon at 2 p.m. Um, I've got two ideas brewing in my head. I haven't decided which one yet. So, and who knows, I might have a third or fourth idea by then too. Um, but yes, check back on Wednesday or Friday right here, 2 p.m. Eastern Time at Stampin' Peace with Mary Nabe, and I'll have another fun inspirational demonstration for you. Linda, you're welcome. Enjoy. Gian, you're welcome. Mary, you're welcome. Good night, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your evening, and I hope to see you back here on Friday. And please do invite others to um, join us on that day, and please like this page and share it as well. That way, um, we just invite more people to join in the fun of creating. Bye-bye.